This is the MCP2515 CAN BOSS module from Microchip. In this tutorial, we will learn about the CAN BOSS protocol by interfacing MCP2515 CAN BOSS module with ESP32 microcontroller. We will transmit the DS18B20 temperature sensor data over a certain distance using the CAN protocol. Controller area network, also known as CAN bus, is a common industrial bus because of its long travel distance, medium communication speed, and high reliability. It is commonly found on modern machine tools and as an automotive diagnostic bus. The standard communication protocols like UART, SPI, and I2C are not reliable for vehicle system and where the communication is done over long wires. Hence, we need an automobile communication protocol like the CAN protocol for high speed and thousands of data transmission at a single time. In this guide, we will learn about the CAN bus communication protocol using microchip MCP2515 CAN bus module and a pair of ESP32 board. Using the pair of CAN bus module MCP2515, we will send the temperature sensor data over a distance of few centimeters. Typically, the communication speed for CAN ranges from 50 kbps to 1 mbps and the distance can range from 40 meters at 1 mbps to 1000 meters at 50 kbps. So, let's begin with today's guide. First, let's learn about the CAN BOSS protocol in short. Today's vehicle can contain over 70 electronic control units, also known as nodes, that control subsystems for the engine, power steering, anti-lock brakes, and more. Communication between these subsystems is critical to ensure the reliability and safety demanded in the automotive market. In the past, the nodes were connected by dedicated analog signal wires, which was architecturally complex and costly. In 1986, the controller area network or CAN was standardized, allowing in vehicle nodes to communicate via multiplex wiring rather than dedicated ones. Let's take a high level look at the main benefits of CAN and why they can make CAN the most widely used in vehicle communication network today. First, CAN is low cost. Because each ECU in a vehicle is able to communicate with rest of the network via a single CAN interface. The cost and architectural complexity are significantly decreased. The CAN bus also makes for easier design upgrades, conserving precious engineering time. CAN is efficient. The protocol is message-based, meaning every node on the network can send and receive messages and can determine if a message is relevant to them or should be ignored. Only one message can be transmitted on the CAN bus at a given time. An arbitration ID within the CAN frame indicates message priority, allowing higher priority messages to continue with no delay, while lower priority messages wait, thus avoiding message corruption caused by collision. And speaking of corruption, CAN is reliable. The CAN specification contains five methods of error checking, making it extremely reliable for applications where failure is not an option. CAN is a robust. Its high-speed data lines are resistant to electrical disturbance. Some CAN controllers and receivers also come in extended temperature ranges or fault resistance varieties for the most demanding environments. Lastly, CAN is flexible because it's a message-based protocol. The nodes on the network contain no identifying information associated with them. This allows nodes to be added or removed from the system without any hardware or software modification to be done. Because of these benefits, there is no wonder CAN is the network of choice for ECU and sensor communication in nearly all automotive applications today. It is also growing in popularity in many industrial applications, where the same reliability, robustness and flexibility are required, including building automation, medical devices, aviation and many more. Now. Let's see this CAN bus module. The MCP2515 CAN bus controller is a simple module that supports CAN protocol version 2.0b.
It can be used for communication at 1 Mbps. The MCP2515IC is a standalone CAN controller and has an integrated SPI interface for communication with microcontrollers. The module has TJA1050IC, which acts as an interface between the MCP2515 CAN controller IC and the physical CAN bus. The board has a 8 MHz crystal oscillator. A jumper can be attached which will give 120 ohm termination. CAN H and CAN L are the two screws where wires can be attached over a distance for communicating with another CAN module. This is the circuit diagram of the CAN module. The MCP2515IC is the main controller that internally consists of three main subcomponents. The CAN module, the control logic and the SPI block. You can refer to the MCP2515 datasheet for more information. Now, let's interface MCP2515 CAN bus module with ESP32 and test the CAN communication protocol. Here is the circuit diagram for this. Since MCP2515 is an SPI module, so connect its pin to the SPI pins of ESP32. At the transmitter end, we have connected a DS18B20 waterproof temperature sensor for temperature measurement. On the receiver side, an OLED display is placed for displaying the temperature. The CAN H and CAN L of the transmitter are connected to the CAN H and CAN L of the receiver respectively. You can assemble the circuit on a breadboard or you can use your own custom PCB for this project. I used a pair of breadboards to assemble this circuit. This is the transmitter part and this is the receiver part. The connections are too many, hence too many wires are required for breadboard connection. Before moving to the coding part of the project, we need to install MCP2515 CAN bus library to the Arduino IDE. This CAN bus library gives your Arduino CAN bus capability with multiple features. It implements CAN V2.0B at up to 1 Mbps and also SPI interface up to 10 MHz. It has a standard 11-bit and extended 29-bit data and remote frames. There are two receive buffers with prioritized message storage. Download the library from the following GitHub link and then add it to the Arduino library folder. You also need to add Dallas temperature library and one wire library. The code is divided into two parts, one as CAN transmitter code and the other as CAN receiver code. In the transmitter code, first we declare all the necessary libraries. Then we define temperature sensor pin as 21. We define struct data type for storing CAN message format. This line sets the SPI CS pin to 5. We define number of retries as 3 and also define CAN ID for acknowledgement. Under set of function, we initialize serial begin, SPI begin and sensor begin. The MCP2515 is reset using this command. The MCP2515 is set to a speed of 500 kbps and 8 MHz as the clock frequency. Then it is set as a normal mode. Using this library function, we read the temperature value from DS18B20 sensor. The CAN ID is given as 0 cross 036 and DLC as 2. Also, we give the MSB and LSB for temperature data to the data 0 and data 1. In order to send the message to CAN bus, we are using the following statement. Then we print the value on serial monitor. We have also implanted the acknowledgement function to check whether message is received or not. For this, we used millis function and did some checking statements. All these statements are here for error checking. In the receiver code, we used SPI, MCP2515 and SSD1306 library. Then we defined OLED parameters here. The same SPI pin for CSID defined and CAN ID is set. In the setup section, we initialize serial begin, SPI begin and all other OLED functions. Rest of the functions are similar to the transmitter code. This statement is used to receive the message from the CAN bus. If the message is received, it gets into the if condition. 
In the if condition, the data is received and stored in can message. The data is zero, that has the temperature value. Finally, the value is displayed on OLED screen. Upload both of these codes to the respective ESP32 boards. After uploading the code, when the board is powered, you should notice the temperature value read by DS18B20 will be sent to another ESP32 through CAN communication. The message will be displayed on the OLED of the second ESP32. You may also open the serial monitor and check the same transmitter and receiver message. Remember, you may need to short a 120 ohm resistor at receiver MCP2515 board. Else, if not shorted, sometimes the OLED may appear blank as no message is received. This is how you can use the CAN bus communication in ESP32. In case you have any other questions, you can comment in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.